put it back up on the shelf. Alexa, I'm gonna get a copyright strike if you don't turn it off. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, stop. Okay, wow, what a great opening. Hey guys, my name's Avery Miller. I am currently too close to my desk right now. Let's try to fix that out, okay. Oh, it's in manual focus, great. So, um, actually this is coincidental because I'm going to be getting a new lens soon, which is very exciting. But now I have to go um, stop recording this so I can change it to autofocus. Anyways, hey guys, it's Avery, and I tell you what, I can feel it still. Um, and it is coming back. That song is one of my favorite all-time songs ever. It's so good, and it's, the social commentary is so deep with this one. Before we start today, I would like to update everyone on the book situation, right? I've sold qu quite a few copies, and I'm still trying to figure out what way uh, the trees are going to be planted, because like, I, I had this idea, getting seeds is so cheap. They're essentially free, because they grow on trees. But the hardest part is trying to find a place to plant the trees. So I thought, what if I created some sort of like website where you could go on there, get a seed that's native to the place you live in the mail, and you can plant it. it would, it's like a good charity idea, like you get seeds in the mail for free. Of course, another option is a pre-established website, which obviously would be a lot easier, like um, onetreeplanted.org, I believe, where you can like pay for trees to be planted, and I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up going with because it's the simplest and all that stuff. As for the profits that I've made, do you see this? Do you see this? Yeah, boy! Flippity flip! That is right. I spent most of the profits from the book on fake prof money. This was like $10 for motion picture use only. And then his face is a little messed up, I think. And then all oh, these ones in, this, in between are fake. If you don't believe that this is fake money, which I, is actually a lot easier to believe than it being real, but this, this bill from it is for negative $12. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty fake. Quentin Trembley, wasn't he like the uh, 12th and a half president or something? I don't know, I, I'm, I gotta rub up on my history. Anyways, let's just put that back there to make me seem like the worst person of all time. I'm not Logan Paul, guys. I don't have that much money laying around. <laughs> that's literally everything I hate in the world, okay. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about what we're actually going to be talking about today. Wow, that's a groundbreaking idea. So I am giving you guys a tour of my um, pet alien collection, um, and I figured we'd just jump right into this. First we have over here is a specimen from Kepler 22 from, you know, the northern constellation of Sigus, Sigus, I don't know. I got this from the black market, so be careful. Don't be alarmed, that is not blood. Um, in fact, that is actually fruit punch. We've discovered in our research with these things that they produce um, a fruit punch-like substance. So it might be a little bit hard to see because of the lighting, but there's a big iris right there, and then the rest of this, you can see like the uh, regulators and uh, it is, oh man, this fruit punch gets everywhere. Okay. If we stay still, we might be able to see the iris focus underneath. Yeah, see that? It's, it's moving around in there trying to see stuff very cool. Of course, up next is something also really interesting. And this is a type of creature that attempts to mimic the foliage from its home planet. Um, and you can see them right here. Here they are, they're walking around in here. So you check those guys out. Now, um, I forgot where these guys come from, but it's also a pretty far away plant. Oh look, he's coming onto my finger. Come on up, buddy. Guys, I have a confession to make. Um, these are fake. These are props, guys. Goodness sakes, this one has a piece of string attached to it. It's just a 3D print that is covered in cotton and paint. Could you imagine if there was a creature that had evolved through natural selection just over time to look like a leaf? That would be completely crazy, guys. We don't live in a parallel universe. This is not, the magic is very hard to come by in real life. Actually, guys, you've been pranked a second time. These guys are real. This is a real thing. This is called a leaf bug, and it will blow your mind if only I could focus. What we're gonna be looking at today is a insect known as 
the leaf bug. I'm sure at some point I've mentioned before that I'm really into insects and uh, sciencey things, specifically bugs when it comes to animals. My life has always been composed of a series of obsessions, right? Something I'm always thinking about, like 100% of the time. I, I latch onto it mentally, and my first obsession, I think, was insects. After that, it was like stamps, then coin collecting, then my DS, if I remember right. And then, somewhere along, it became making YouTube videos, which is how we've ended up here, and I've never really moved on from that. Of course, the older I've gotten, the more stuff I've been able to obsess over at the same time, so, uh, you know, plants, um, furry stuff. My life story aside, this video is big for me because it combines like three of my favorite things ever. Special effects, because I did that special effects thing earlier for no particular reason. Do you see this? I That was actually a still picture and I composited the iris and all that stuff in and the shakes and stuff. I was very happy with that. Anyways, also combines YouTube videos and insects. And this is probably one of my favorite insects of all time. As such, you guys might have figured this out already, but I, oh, Thanks, for Mud Thanks to Mudsy for that bee thing, by the way. You guys have probably gathered at this point that we are going to be discussing insects today, or specifically the this leaf bug thing. I know some people are really not into insects or bugs, as some people call them, and uh, spiders especially. I know that freaks people out a lot, and I, I understand. Although, I think leaf bugs are probably a fantastic introduction to the world of creepy crawlies because, I mean, it's not that creepy. Um, it looks like a leaf. Also, before we get into this here, I was thinking about it, okay? I would like to add that I don't believe my fascination with animals and insects has anything to do with the furry thing. Like, obviously being a furry is weird enough as is, but if it's a lot weirder if it's obsessing over wanting to become an animal and that's not what being a furry is, really. Do you, do you see what I mean? Like, my point is, is that these are two unrelated things. <laughs> you see what I mean? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? My favorite books about insects that I've had since I was a kid all show, that's an old book, I probably shouldn't do that, Stick Insects. And it was always something that fascinated me. My favorite book, because you can see it's the most used, it's that one right there. And I remember this page from when I was younger. Oh man, this book has been used so much. You can see they have a little illustration there, has a whole thing on leaf insects. That book right down there has a leaf insect on the cover. Mostly because if you ask me, leaf insects are probably one of the most evolved mimics um, in all of the animal kingdom, one of them at least. So you can see it here, and this is actually one of the f only books I've seen that refers to them as leaf beetles. So, um, or leaf walking beetles, I think it said. I don't know, I'm nerding out here. Ever since I've been a kid, it's blown my mind how much these guys blur the lines between camouflage and actually becoming a plant. Like, obviously they're not plants at all. But my point is, it's a work of art, and natural selection and evolution is the artist. Okay, I'm sure it's no surprise that when I saw you could buy some of these guys, like, I was like, yes, let's do it. Let's make a video about it. These guys were pretty tough to get. I got three of them, and as you can see in here, they are all babies. We haven't really gotten a good look at them yet, so we'll wait till one of them crawls out of my finger or something. Oh, the one has his foot on my finger. Their technical name, and I heard it both Phil I.D. or Phil I.D. They're Phil I.D. You can see the spelling up there. Um, that's their technical sciencey name, right? They're found naturally anywhere from Asia to Australia, and um, they are famous for their tiny little wings. Oh, and uh, also the fact they look like a plant. Check this guy out, huh? One thing you'll notice while they walk around here. It's probably one of the most frustrating things in my entire life. So as you'll notice when they walk around here, they, they it looks like a leaf, and the body will sometimes curl. They really like to explore quite a lot. Oh, is he good or is he gonna reach out? There he goes. They're often green like the ones I have, although some of them can look like a dying leaf or like a leaf in the fall, like orange or reddish. Some, uh, have a brown mark around the edges, which I thought is just like, what an amazing adaptation that is. Noted, oh my goodness, this other guy's reaching up. <laughs> Did you see that? The other guy was reaching up to want to come crawl in the hand. They are just completely adorable. They're hanging out, oh my goodness, they, they've met. Are they gonna attack each other or something? No, they don't really attack each other because it looks like they're confusing each other for leaves. Oh my goodness, I think they're freaked out about the hair on my arm. Why does body hair exist? I just shaved my arms a little bit ago and for some reason now it's grown back enough that these bugs are not happy about it. So one thing you'll notice as they walk around here is their bodies often curl 
right? And when they walk, a lot of the times, especially when wind gets blown on them, they sort of shimmy. They do this little shimmy thing. And what's that that's supposed to, you can see this guy over here is doing it. It's a really good example there. When he walks, he does this little, his body moves back and forth. And it's supposed to mimic a leaf. If you see a leaf being blown, the leaves often like move back and forth in this very specific manner. And you can often catch these guys doing a very similar thing. And it's such an incredible... Oh, yeah, he's tripping because of my, my tiny little arm hairs. They should get up to several inches over time, which I think will be really interesting to see how that turns out. They're very peaceful. Oh, you can see, he just did a little shake. They're very peaceful, and the reason they look like leaves is because they eat leaves. They, this guy really, they all really like my hands. I wonder if they're trying to look for some sort of warm spot. I mean, just so fascinating. Something I find, whoa, okay. Something I find really interesting about these, uh, these peeps, much like other sticks insects, is that they can, in fact, reproduce asexually. They can have kids normally, or if a female can't find a partner or just doesn't want to find a partner, it just freaking lays eggs anyways, and they hatch. That's hardcore. They reproduce through something called parthenogenesis. <laughs> Try saying that one. What it allows them to do, basically, is just reproduce by themselves. They don't need a male. When they produce through parthenogenesis, oh, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, parthenogenesis, they can only really produce female offspring. This, whoo, oh my gosh, my camera went down, that scared me. Okay, this guy's getting a little bit bored, why don't we? These are, these guys are a funny little group. I don't know why I keep saying guys, I don't. Only females can be produced, and this is because if you produce a male, you're wasting a guaranteed opportunity for reproduction, if that makes any sense. At least that's how I've come to um, sort of understand it. Also, look at this guy over here. Green boy over here is doing something. You want him back on your leaf, bud? They remind me a lot of sloths. If you don't interact with them, they do nothing. Although right now, for the video, they're really moving around quite a lot, which is uh, pretty convenient, honestly. Yeah, see, there you could see them doing those little shakes. When I got these guys out of their cage, which I'll go into in a little bit, one thing they were doing is they did the shaky thing. Yeah, see what he's doing right now? They did that, where they just shake back and forth, and I think that's sort of a thing where it's like, it really cements the concept that they're a leaf. So you can see his head right there. He has these little antenna, yeah. The majority of the time, if there's no moving around them, they just sit like that on a leaf. Sometimes they'll squat down on it to like blend in a little bit more, but back to that fact that they can just lay eggs and reproduce like instantly. Some relatives to these guys, other stick insects, the males have essentially gone extinct because they just reproduce asexually and the males just sort of died out. This stick insect is a species that is just completely female. Although one male stick insect was born relatively recently and that's just a genetic mutation. I, I don't know, I find that so fascinating and also just the fact that like, look at these things. Oh yeah, there he is. So they're tiny now, but they're juveniles. They should live for quite some time. You can see sort of like the leaf vein, the main leaf vein. I'm ashamed that I don't know what the stem that goes throughout the leaf is called, but you can see it imitated perfectly there. And if you look really close, you can see on the corners, there's these little brown marks that are supposed to look like uh, little bite marks. I saw a study. They found a fossil of a leaf insect and it was dated to about 45 million years ago. It looked really similar to the leaf bugs we have today, which I think is really, um, it's, it's telling. They've gotten close enough to a leaf that they don't really need to change that much anymore. Obviously, that's not really the way it works. Like, genetic mutations are something that come up. Ooh, oh, wow, he really wants to. Genetic mutations are something that come up over time, and it's something where it's like the species sort of, you know, leans towards mutations that help any given creature live to have kids, right? Live to reproduce. I don't know why I keep saying kids. It's sort of a weird way to go about saying that, but you get what I'm trying to say. There we go. Okay, they've all settled down a little bit now. But yeah, isn't that, isn't that just fascinating? It's just crazy. You can tell how amazed I am by these guys by the amount of times I say fascinating and stuff. While on the Wikipedia page for the Phila's, Phil, Phil I day, I, I saw this excerpt from a man named Antonio Pigafetta. That is his actual name, people. Antonio Pigafetta. Antonio Pigafetta is one of the earliest people to have said to have interacted with one of these leaf insects, okay? And he wrote in his journal what he thought about this, uh, these guys, okay? Let me, let me get the excerpt here. Let's see here. In this island are also found certain trees. <laughs> First off, I don't know why I'm doing a funny voice because I don't think he spoke English. I think he spoke Italian. And also, I don't know why the video became black and white there because, like, they didn't have a video 
in the 1500s, let alone black and white video. So, I don't know, I'm gonna go with it, guys, just. In this island are also found certain trees, the leaves of which, when they fall, are animated and walk. They are like the leaves of the mulberry tree, but not so long. <laughs> they have the leaf stalk short and pointed, and near the leaf stalk, they have on each side two feet. Now, you can see that um, they actually have three legs, but I think um, the back leg of the insect blends in with its body so much that I think that must have been what he was talking about there. If they are touched, they escape. Oh, wait, I gotta do my accent again. If they are touched, they escape. But if crushed betwixt your feet, they do not give out blood. Note there, I added the betwixt there because I thought that would be a fun word to say. Let's not crush bugs if we can. I, um... I know in this sense it was it was for uh, scientific discovery or whatever, but like there's recent studies that seem to show that insects and um, animals we would classify as like simpler, like uh, crustaceans and uh, birds, all the way up to dogs or pigs or cows. You know they can they can feel pain. So let's let's not go crushing things between your feet. Okay. I kept one for nine days in a box. I love that so much. He's just so matter of fact about the fact that he kept one. Um, after this, he says, I believe they live upon the air. On first reading of that, what I was assuming he was talking about is like, they breathe air, like we know today. I think what his theory was, what he was trying to say is that they're like plants and they can produce energy from seemingly just sitting there. He was incorrect about that because as we have shown, they eat leaves. I think they'd probably go for this fake $10,000 if they uh, if I sent them on top of it. I've gone through so much stuff about these guys, okay? Um, to the point that my 4K 60fps camera right over there has overheated. So one of you guys is saying, Avery, I love these things. I want it. What do I do? Well, I would say they are good pets. Conceivably, you could keep anything as a pet, but the key is you're not going to want to keep something if you can't provide for it um, fully and help it live a, a good pet life, right? So luckily for us, I think it's really easy to do that for leaf bugs because all they need are leaf. These guys live off a variety of leaves. Um, most common for me, at least, is oak. I have a little setup going on over here. Now, it's an aquarium full of oak leaves, and there's some moss at the bottom, and I'm a moss dad. I have a lot of moss hanging around, um, and these are just oak leaves chilling in there. And this is condensation because um, naturally they live in a very humid and wet environment. What you really want to do is keep them, keep them moist, okay? Keep them moist, and they're pretty happy. I'm losing it, guys. I am losing it. In my time observing these things, after you've put them into their cage and they just sort of settle down, they really don't do much. Like, as you can see here, they're just chilling, man. <laughs> That's so funny. Earlier, when I was trying to get these guys out of the tank, one of them walked onto my hand and then just jumped off. It was only like a couple inches to the, uh, to the desk. And once it got on the desk, it sort of shook back and forth to be like, hey, look, I'm a dead leaf. The mimicking of the leaves are, are so clear and intentional. Mind-blowing. I, I, I just love it so much and they're adorable too. Yeah guys, that's pretty much that's pretty much the complete introduction to leaf bugs. I want to know what do you guys think of this video? Um, totally a topic I've never done before but I thought it would be pretty interesting. Um, plus, it's an, plus it's an excuse to buy some of these guys. Last couple days I've been really trying to find good video ideas so if any of you guys have like good furry content drop it in the description because maybe I'll make it a thing. Let me steal from me let me steal ideas from you guys Woo wait a minute do you want to see my videos 24 hours earlier before they are released publicly onto YouTube become one of my patreon people if you become a patreon people it's Literally, if all you have to do, a dollar or more or something, you get my videos 24 hours earlier if you're into that. And you also get to support my video making um, and more perks too. So check that out if you're interested. And that being said, I would like to thank my current Patreon people. Kasai Ember made a big donation um, this month. Ocelot 4000, still going at the $20 tier, which is insane. Huge thanks to you guys, and huge thanks to everyone who donates to my Patreon. We're getting pretty close to being self-sufficient, meaning that the bills for my editing software and for Vimeo and uh, my website and that sort of stuff will be able to pay themselves, which would be nice. Um, so really, thank you guys, that's huge. Even if you don't give anything, just watch the videos, thank you. Love you guys, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the comments. If you like this, you should follow my channel or my Vimeo if you wanna see future videos and you can also find me on Twitter and stuff. See you next time. Um, I've been editing this video for like weeks now and I happened to glance over here. Earlier today, the leaf bugs looked just like they did 
when I originally filmed the video, but check out, check this out. The one right there has appeared to have molted and has grown like an inch in size. Isn't that crazy? Look at how big it got. Bye.